What's up, you crafty little monkeys? I'm back, and we're going to be making macarons today by popular demand, so stay tuned. But first, I need to annihilate this cup of coffee, so excuse me. I'm also going to have a helper in the kitchen today. This is Charlotte, and she's badass. Macarons, not macaroons. They are French cookies. Putting on a little lipstick is going to add to the cookie. This step is optional, but if you don't do this and your cookies don't turn out, you'll know why. Obviously, you're going to need a few things to make the cookies. Nothing fancy. Shit you already have in your kitchen, I promise. These are not hard. I don't know why people think these are hard. You're going to need a mixer. I have a KitchenAid, but, you know, there's no snootiness. Any mixer is going to do. If it mixes, it will work. I do recommend getting some parchment paper. Super cheap, super easy. I like the pop-up sheets and not the kind that you have to tear off because it's just easier. You will need an oven. If you don't have an oven, I'm sorry, but you're probably fucked for this recipe. You might want an apron. I personally never wear an apron, but my mother-in-law got me this for Christmas, and so I felt like I should wear it at least once so I could send her a picture. You will also need some piping bags. You might know how to make your own. You might buy some cheap ones. I don't care. You need something that will squirt batter. It would help a lot for you to have a kitchen scale for this recipe, but if you don't, I will give you the exact measurements that I'm using for this instance, and hopefully it will work. And last but not least, you'll need a couple of cookie sheets, obviously. Why do they have to make it so hard? 140 grams? Half a cup, people, half a cup. Did you see what I did there? Because I don't have an eighth teaspoon, so I just filled up the quarter teaspoon. About half. That's it. How are you doing so far? This isn't hard, right? Okay. Preheat your oven to 300 degrees, would ya? People who want to make this recipe seem more difficult than it is are going to tell you that you need to use aged egg whites. That is bullshit. You do need to use room temperature egg whites, okay? So what I do right now is I take my egg whites and I put them next to the oven while it's heating. See that? As the oven is heating up, the egg whites are coming to room temperature quickly. So fucking easy. If you want to get fancy about it, you can crack your eggs the day before. 24 hours before, cover them with a paper towel and refrigerate them overnight. Not necessary. You want your flour to be really smooth, and you want your shells really smooth, that's why. So we're going to take the powdered sugar and the almond flour and put it in the blender. <laughs> that would have made a difference. Normally, I would jump right into the next step, which is mixing the ingredients, but I have to go pick up a teenager in 30 minutes, and I will run out of time. So instead, we will take a small break, go have some lunch, a cocktail, put on some lipstick if you're starting to get worried about your cookies, because I know you are. And I'll be back faster than you can say I can't stand teenagers, and I can't wait for school to start, and I need a drink. Also, if you're enjoying my particular brand of bullshit, you should come over and follow me on my own account at Ritzy Parties. Here's my snap code. Get ready. Before I go pick up that little brat, I should tell you that at the end of all of this, I'm going to write up the whole recipe and make it available for you in a link so you don't have to screenshot. You know, unless you think I'm fabulous and you just want to, like, look at me later, which is fine. I'm back. Let's continue with the macarons, shall we? In this next step, we are going to be whipping the egg whites. So, I like this attachment. 
to whip it good. Pour in the egg whites. Ooh, that is so nasty. It looks like snot, doesn't it? We are locked and loaded, and we are ready to start frothing egg whites. Oh, yeah. This step will be done on medium speed, and you will beat the egg whites until they are frothy and white, and you can no longer see any liquid egg white. It's going to look like that if you did it right. This is the point where you want to add some food coloring if you want your macaron shells to be colored. I will be using this teal color by Wilton. It's a gel color. Keep beating it now until you get stiff peaks in the egg whites. And this is where that lipstick would come in handy for getting things stiff. See what I mean? Stood right up. Now we are going to add these dry ingredients to the egg whites. Carefully folding in, keep the air in the mixture. And now we're going to put it into the piping bag, which I have cut and put a tip into. And the tip is this tip. I don't know the name. Now we are piping these circles onto the parchment paper. Uh, I'll try to do one. At this point, I like to bang the tray on the counter a couple of times to get any bubbles out, and also because it helps me with my frustration. If you wanted to add sprinkles to the tops of your macarons, this is the time to do it. What the heck? Let's do a few. Now you need to wait. You don't just pop these babies in the oven. They need to form a skin, so you have to let them dry for about 20 minutes to 40 minutes. I find this to be the perfect time for a midday cocktail. Cheers, bitches. The amount of time that it takes for your macarons to dry is going to depend on the humidity in your home. I live in California. We don't have a lot of humidity, so maybe 20 minutes. Sadly, that means I only get probably one cocktail. You might get three or four, you lucky bastard. You will know that your macarons are ready to go in the oven and are dry is you touch one on top. And if it has a film on it, you're good. See that? I touched it and it didn't come away with me. That means it's party time. Pop them in the oven at 300 degrees for 12 minutes. When the 12 minutes is up, you open the oven, rotate the pans, and go for another 10 minutes at the same temperature. You'll need an oven mitt. I forgot to put that on. If you actually needed me to tell you that you need an oven mitt to touch a hot pan, you need more than my help. When the oven goes off, we are going to be testing these macarons for doneness. And how we do that is by touching the top of one to see if it sticks. Another way to check is to try to peel one slightly off the parchment paper and it should release easily. If it sticks, they're not quite ready. While we're waiting this last few minutes, let's talk about fillings. Filling macarons is fun and it's also a place you can get kind of creative. But wait, they're done. Watch. Yep, it's definitely set and it is releasing from the parchment, which is great. That means it's done. See how they got that little pretty ruffled foot? That means you did them right. Well, it means I did. Hopefully yours turned out too. I know there's a huge urge to bust right into these and see how they taste. Trust me, they're fucking delicious. But let them cool. Calm yourself. Let's talk about those fillings. Here are a few of my favorites. Listed out in no particular order.
Once the cookies have cooled and you have removed them from the parchment paper, ooh, that one got a little fucked up, don't look. Yeah, let's talk about this one instead. You're going to want to match them up. You know, you want a top and a bottom that are pretty equal. I did these in a hurry. They're usually much more round. To keep it easy, I just threw some white buttercream icing, this is decorator icing, in a piping bag and I'm going to fill these cookies. But I'm not done. I'm going to show you one more trick. I'm a little extra in case you didn't know that. I know. Fucking amazing, right? They are not hard, are they? And now the test. Thanks for following along with me today, and I hope you try this recipe. If you do, send me a picture over at Ritzy Parties. Snap code coming up. After I finish eating all of the macarons and maybe having another cocktail, I will type up the recipe, all the instructions, and share it in a link right here on Create Club. Thank you so much to Christy for being here with us again today. Those look delicious, and now I really want to make some. Stay tuned because as soon as we get the recipe link from Christy, who is posting that on her blog, we will share it with you guys so that you can make some macarons yourself. Now, if you missed Christy the last time she was here, or if you just want to rewatch it because she's so awesome, we have a link to that as well. So, swipe up to check it out.